found in a local charity shop for just $4 was this kit set from JCAR called Short Circuits. It's intended as a beginner's course in electronics. It comes with the components, a plastic board because this is soldless, and attached to it, though not in the item I got, was a book that had all the instructions for building the circuits. The history of short circuits, well, you can't help thinking that it is a successor to the Dick Smith Funray series, particularly Funray Volume 1. Dick Smith got out of electronics and ended up shutting up shop. And that left JCAR as the main retail electronics bits and pieces survivor, along with Outronics based in Perth. Anyway, JCAR have this short circuits, which is a bit of an updated version to the Funray series, but very, very similar. So we'll take a look and see what sort of things we can make from it. This project kit is still a current product. You can still order it and it's $51.95 including the book. I don't have the book but the good thing is that they allow you to download the PDF. So let's take a look at Short Circuits Volume 1. There's the board, no soldering required. And there are springs, slightly different springs to the type that uh, Dick Smith used. Dick Smith normally used screws and washers. They might have used springs in later versions. But anyway, there's the springs that you put the component leads in. You can probably recognise a few of the components there. And... It was first published in 1996, so this was when Dick Smith was still going, so it was basically JCAR's rival product to the Dick Smith Funway series, but very clearly inspired by it. Uh, some of the projects are similar. Uh, mini organ, the Funway one had one of those, but there are some a bit different, and Whereas the first Funway 1 had 20 projects, Short Circuits goes a few more projects extra. Another thing with Short Circuits is that with the project kit, everything is in the one package. Whereas with Dick Smith, you had kits for projects 1 to 10 and then 11 to 20. Um, so that's how they could start off with fewer components just in the 1 to 10 and then you'd get the extra parts just to split up the costs. But anyway, um, we have, just like with Dick Smith Funway 1, you have a inspirational introduction from the manag managing director, Gary Johnston, the late Gary Johnston, um, who talks about his start in electronics and even starting off with a crystal set and what he did later on. So very much in the similar vein to the Dick Smith Funway. And then here we are, it talks about how you mount the components. Little catch there, a bit like a hairpin inside the spring, and you just press the spring down and insert the lead. So a little bit different. And as with a lot of simple electronic kits, it starts off with an LED flasher. Um, now it looks incredibly simple for a LED flasher and that is because it uses a flashing LED. I'm not sure if they were available when uh, Dick Smith Funway 1 kits came out. There you had to build a LED flasher that used transistors, resistors, capacitors, whereas here it's all self-contained in the flashing LED. These cartoons might be familiar to readers of Silicon Chip done by the noted cartoonist B.J. Akerst. Uh, no longer with us, but he did heaps and heaps of cartoons. You might have seen them in the uh, service section of Silicon Chip and various other parts of the magazine. Also used um, 
to decorate this book as well. Um, other projects, won't go through them all. Continuity Tester, that was also in the Funway book. A little bit different. Um, the Dick Smith Funway one was just a LED in series with battery, resistor and probes. This one has a transistor, so it's possibly a bit more sensitive. And like with the Funway books, a little box telling you how it all worked. A light alarm, that was very similar uh, also in Funway 1. A magic candle is a variation of that. LED flasher, that's the type that uses ordinary non-flashing LEDs, but the benefit there is you can change the component values and alter the flashing rate. Um, in the, this case, the LEDs also flash alternately, so that could be very useful for model railway type circuits. Um, siren, that was or at least quite similar. Mini organ, very similar circuit to the Funway design. Moisture indicator, uh, this is a bit more complex. I think the Funway version was just an LED. Anyway, this had a, a audio oscillator. A Morse code transmitter. Uh, logic circuits. Uh, so you're replicating various uh, gates, like that's a notch gate. There is an OR gate before. Um, now they're talking about NAND gates. And if we keep going, we're only up to project 13, so we'll go a bit faster. Um, are there any radio circuits? Yes, there are. An AM radio. And this uses the MK484, so it's very similar to the ZN414 that um, Dick Smith kit used. This can drive a speaker. Another one, three transistor amplifier. Well, this is going to give you quite a lot of um, audio output. Um, you can team that up with the radio I mentioned before. And there is an example right here. Um, it's actually a five transistor radio plus the IC. So this would actually be quite a good receiver. It would pick up stations from interstate. One thing I found though is the bias setting of the MK484 is very critical. I have done other videos where I describe it and if you get that right then you can get surprisingly good results. If the um, bias setting here isn't so good then it's quite mediocre but it will still pull in the local stations. A touch operated switch, a bit more advanced. This is actually a bit more advanced than the some of the Funway 1 projects here. Of course, this book is full colour, whereas back when the Funway 1 book was printed, uh, it would have been more expensive, so it was just um, two colours, I think. Whereas here they can uh, have colours useful for the colour code. Right, this has what all the parts do. And they also have in the book, um, and this would have been one of the inducements to buy the book, and the Funway did this as well. They had cutouts that you could put over your board and make it easier to align the components with the correct polarities and positions. Has this kit been opened? I don't think it has. Something that is helpful is that the potentiometer here is actually pre-soldered with, uh, with wires. Like there's two potentiometers with a variable capacitor is here. 
um, so that's okay. And we have a collection of resistors, the buzzers, the speaker. And what do we have here for the uh, documentation? Please read before commencing construction. Okay, that's the guarantee. Oh, this is uh, just a little um, leaflet saying what the short circuit kits are all about. Um, And there's a parts list in case you wanted to buy extra bits. Now, why have we got... We've actually got some circuits here. Maybe these are uh, modifications. Yes, there are. Okay. This is for the three transistor amplifier. If you want to increase the volume, we suggest replacing um, resistor there instead of 8.2K, 4.7K. So... They've obviously had some afterthoughts and included the extra resistor. And here we are with the AM radio with power amplifier. Uh, same deal. It uses the same audio amplifier circuit. So, yeah, just a, a little modification there. You might think... I'm going to build one or more of these projects and show you how it worked. Well, you're wrong. And a good thing too, especially if you're in Australia. Because, as a reward for you watching this long, I'm going to make this a competition. In 50 words or less, explain how getting this kit would benefit you and your journey in radio and electronics. I'm pretty good at detecting AI, so can't use chat GPT or similar. It must be your own words. 50 words or less explain how this would benefit your journey into radio and electronics. Because of postage, it's just for people within Australia. But if you're interested, have a go and send an email to vk3ye at qsl.net vk3ye at qsl.net in 50 words or less explain how this would benefit you if you want to operate portable qrp and get great results you need a good antenna as high as possible and that works on as many bands as possible a good basis of that is a telescopic squid pole. Right now is a great time to get one, or two, or three, because Haverford have their end of financial year sale. 10% off, plus if you put in VK3YE as the discount code, another 10%. Offer available for customers within Australia. Just visit the Haverford website and search squid poles to browse the range.